Hi folks, good to see you again. Uh, sorry for the voice but uh, I've, it's a little bit croaky because I've had a very bad cold this week. But uh, first time out today I just wanted to shoot this movie. Uh, you know not everybody that I ministered to or came across in the prison uh, became a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's a pity I would like it to have not been so but I'm afraid it was. I used to have a saying uh, amongst the men in the prison. I used to say, if there's anything I can do to help to convert you, I will do so. But if I cannot help to convert you, I will make sure that you know that Jesus Christ has walked through your life by the things that he's about to do for you. I want to tell you about one such man. One day I was walking through the hospital wing of the prison and I went into the office to speak to the officers first and uh, they said to me, John there's someone we would like you to uh, just go and spend a little bit of time with. He's a very sad case and we all feel a bit sorry for him. So I said, okay, what's, uh, what's his problem? And they said to me, well, he's got a nine month sentence left to run and he's got six months to live. He's in a dreadful state uh, of cancer and he, he will be dead, we're assured, by six months in, or in six months time. So we, uh, he won't get out. So will you go and spend some time with him? So I said, sure, I will do that. So I went down to the cell where this man was and he was in a sorry state, very, very ill, you could see, very emaciated. The cancer was just eating him up. And during the course of the conversation, I said to him, son, what's the biggest problem you've got with dying? And he looked me, looked me in the eyes and he said, well, the biggest problem I've got, Father John, is that I'm never going to see my son again. So I said, well, that's, that's not too big a problem. I said, we can, uh, we can arrange for your son to come into the prison, even to the side of your bed, and that can all be arranged. And he said, oh, no, no, I don't want my son in this place. And I don't want him to see me like this. Well, I understood that many prisoners uh, would say the same thing or a similar thing. So I said to him, well, that only leave me with one option. And he said, what's that? I said, well, I have a God who answers prayer. I said, so what if I ask my God to extend your life for a few months longer and so you can get out of this prison, go home and spend some quality time with your son? And he said, would your God do that for me? I said, well, we can only ask, can't we? So I told him what I would do. I would lay hands upon him and pray for him and that I would continue to do so every time I visited the hospital wing. And he really agreed. He jumped at this opportunity. And so I prayed for him and uh, then I left. Each time that I visited the hospital wing, I would repeat the process. I would lay hands on him and pray for him that God would extend his life. So the months went by and we got up to four months, five months, then the dreaded six month, and he was still alive. Then seven months went by, eight months went by, and then I, I had to go away on holiday, so uh, I didn't see him after that. When I returned from holiday, I went to the uh, hospital wing, went into the office and said, how is so-and-so? And they said, well, we can't understand it, John, but uh, he was still alive and he was released, he's gone home. I said, well, that can't be a bad thing, can it? And we all agreed that was a good thing. About another three or four months went by and some of the uh, prisoners came to me and said, do you remember? And they mentioned his name and I said, sure, I remember him. And they said, do you know what's happened to him since he was released? I said, I've really no idea. I've had no contact with him. And one prisoner said to me, look, I've got his address. And we're all curious to know how he is or whether he might even be dead. Would you go and visit him and find out for us? I said, sure, I will do that. Fortunately, the uh, address the prisoner gave me wasn't too far away from the prison. So I did go and visit this house. 
As I walked up the drive, I noticed that there was a large car on the uh, on the drive, and the front end was jacked up. And as I approached the front of it, there were two legs sticking out. Somebody was doing some repair work on the car. So I shouted out underneath uh, the car. I said, can you tell me, is this the house? And then I mentioned the name of the ex-prisoner. It turned out that the man under the car was on one of these trolleys and he pulled himself out, just leapt to his feet with a big grin on his face. He said, it's me, Father John, it's me, look at me. And I said, wow, you're the healthiest looking corpse I've ever seen. He said, do you know, Father John, he said, my doctor can't understand not only why I'm uh, not dead, but why I'm so fit and so healthy, can't understand it. He said, but I know why. I said, go on, then tell me. What's your version of the story? He said, it's because you pray to your God and your God answered your prayer. Isn't that right? I said, that, that's true. That's what's happened. I said, let's go in your house. You can make me a cup of coffee. I need to talk with you. So we went in the house and we had a good long talk and I told him about becoming a Christian. I even recommended a church just round the corner from him where I, I, I knew the church and I had friends there. And uh, I talked to him and, and with a great sadness, he looked at me and said, Father John, he said, I'm too enmeshed in the drug gangs. I just can't break free from them. And uh, we continued talking for a while. And I think it became obvious that he was not going to rise to the occasion and commit himself to Christ. But you know, I learned something from that experience, that God doesn't always do things for people who will return the kindness back. That God sometimes, quite often perhaps, more often than what we would like to think, will do things for people just because he wants to do it. And if there's no comeback, no gratitude, he will still do it anyway. And so I learned something about God from that experience, that uh, it's not only for those who will pay you back by doing something you want. Sometimes God just will do it anyway. And isn't that wonderful? What kind of a God do we follow that will just give things away regardless? I mean, when you think that Jesus Christ died upon the cross, and how many people have mocked him, despised him, ridiculed people like me? I used to do that. I used to ridicule him and say, there is no God. And one day I did come to follow Jesus, but not everybody does. And yet God still blesses them. Isn't that wonderful? I think we've got a wonderful God. Now, I just want to leave you with this thought, go in Christ this week. I don't want to be one of those that take the chance of receiving something from the Lord and not giving something back. I'm going to stick close to him. I always say, I, I, this is how close I stick to him. <laughs> I'm a big guy, but I still need to stick close and I hang on to him. And I want to encourage you this week to stick close to him. He's a wonderful, wonderful God and he's coming back soon. God bless you all. I hope this little video blesses you. Amen. Bye for now. Thank you.